water levels at the Panama Canal are actually causing a traffic jam in one of the largest trading routes in the world. 40% of all U.S. container traffic passes through it. About $270 billion of trade each year rides on this ribbon of water. The delays are rippling through the global economy. Imagine waking up one day to find that the world's largest canal, once teeming with water, has suddenly disappeared. The Panama Canal is one of the most crucial waterways in the world. The ongoing water crisis threatens the future of the maritime route. It's not a mirage or a magic trick. It's the shocking reality faced by thousands who rely on this vital waterway. The Panama Canal a lifeline for trade and transportation, has vanished, leaving a dry expanse where ships once sailed. But what unseen force could drain such a massive expanse of water, leaving ships stranded and economies on the brink of collapse? Could this be a carefully planned disruption aimed at endangering the world's trade systems? Join us as we uncover the mystery behind how the world's largest canal suddenly dry up. The Making of the Panama Canal Recent reports have shown the Panama Canal drying up at an alarming pace. This historic waterway, once bustling with vessels of all sizes, now grapples with maintaining sufficient water levels for its operations. This drying poses a serious threat to global trade as the canal serves as a crucial link between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, massively reducing travel times for ships. But how was this massive project initiated? You see, the notion of constructing a canal through Panama has roots stretching back centuries. Back in the 16th century, the Spanish explorers were the first to grasp the potential of a route connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Panama's Isthmus, a slim stretch of land dividing the two vast bodies of water, held the promise of a shortcut. Unfortunately, the technology of that era fell short, leaving this vision just a dream. Then, in 1513, the Spanish explorer Vasco Núñez de Balboa achieved a remarkable feat. He became the first European to cross the isthmus and lay eyes on the Pacific Ocean. This discovery fueled the persistent dream of a canal. Skipping ahead to the late 1800s, the French, inspired by their triumph with the Suez Canal, took on a grand endeavor to turn the Panama Canal dream into reality. Led by Ferdinand de Lesseps, the mastermind behind the Suez Canal, the French commenced construction in 1881. Yet, they faced enormous challenges. Dense jungles, swamps, high mountains, and relentless diseases like malaria and yellow fever, crippling their workforce. The death toll rose, costs soared, and the dream began to crumble. Panama's landscape, unlike the Suez's flat desert, proved to be a formidable opponent. By 1899, after almost two decades and vast resources expended, the French attempt collapsed, leaving the dream of a canal appearing more distant than ever. However, where the French stumbled, the Americans saw a chance. Realizing the strategic and commercial significance of a canal, the United States assumed control in 1904. Learning from the French missteps, they adopted a new strategy under the guidance of engineers like John Findlay Wallace, John Frank Stevens, and George Washington Guthels. Their innovation, a lock-based system that lifted ships to Gatun Lake and then lowered them on the other side, minimizing excavation needs and addressing prior challenges. Finally, on August 15, 1914, the SS Ancon completed the first official transit of the canal, marking the realization of a centuries-old dream. This feat, considered one of the most remarkable in engineering history, showcased human perseverance and genius. But have you ever pondered the complex layout and navigation mechanisms behind this great achievement? The engineering mastery of the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal, spanning around 50 miles from the Atlantic to the Pacific, isn't just a straightforward channel. It's a marvel of engineering, carefully designed to guide ships safely and efficiently. At its heart are three lock systems, Miraflores, Pedro Miguel, and Gatun. These locks act like aquatic elevators, hoisting vessels up or down as they transition through different sections of the canal. But why these locks? 
Why not just carve a direct path from one ocean to the other? Well, that's where the terrain of the isthmus comes into play. Panama's landscape isn't uniform. It has a substantial elevation change in the middle. Creating a straight passage would demand a huge excavation effort. So the best solution was to use locks, raising ships to a man-made lake, and then lowering them on the opposite side. Speaking of lakes, ever heard of Gatun Lake? It's a massive artificial water body covering roughly 164 square miles, also functioning as a reservoir for the locks. Here's the clever part. When a ship enters a lock, enormous gates seal behind it. Water from Gatun Lake fills the chamber, lifting the ship to match the lake's level. Once the vessel reaches the right height, the gates on the other end open, allowing the ship to sail into the lake. On the other side, the process reverses, lowering the ships back to sea level before they exit the canal. Each time a ship navigates the canal, a staggering 52 million gallons of fresh water from Gatun Lake pour into the ocean. It's a huge amount, highlighting the important role of the lake in the canal's operation. This carefully designed system showcases the sheer brilliance and innovation behind the Panama Canal's functioning. You might be curious about how ships manage to navigate through the intricate network of locks and lakes in the Panama Canal. Well, it's a blend of meticulous design and the expertise of canal pilots. These highly trained professionals guide ships through the canal, ensuring they maneuver the locks and channels safely. The journey is such that even seasoned ship captains hand over control to a canal pilot during the transit. Now here's the fascinating bit. Considering the substantial amount of water used for each transit, you might wonder how the canal maintains such a consistent supply. It's all about the tropical climate in the region, blessing it with plentiful rainfall that replenishes the lake. But changing climate patterns are starting to upset this delicate balance, a challenge we'll delve into further. From drought to standstill. The Panama Canal is encountering unprecedented water depletion. This fresh water is the lifeblood of the intricate lock system, responsible for lifting and lowering ships as they navigate the waterway. Each transit gulp considerable amounts of fresh water, which, once used, flows into the ocean, unable to be recovered. This system, while efficient, becomes vulnerable, particularly in the face of changing environmental conditions. But how did we reach this point? The current situation with the canal's water levels is unprecedented. Although the canal has grappled with water-related challenges in the past, none as severe as what we're facing now. The canal's water supply relies heavily on Gatun Lake and Alajuela Lake, primarily replenished by rainfall, both crucial sources for the canal's lock system. However, recent shifts in weather patterns and reduced rainfall have caused a significant decline in these lakes' water levels, directly impacting the canal's efficiency. Why is fresh water so critical for the canal's operation? Well, for a ship to traverse from one ocean to another, it must be raised or lowered using the lock system, which demands substantial amounts of fresh water to fill the locks. This water-intensive process allows ships to adjust to the right level, but when there's a shortage of this vital resource, the canal's operations suffer, ships face longer waiting times, cargo loads might need to be reduced, and in extreme cases, the canal could cease functioning altogether. Past challenges like the El Nino weather phenomenon, causing reduced rainfall and subsequently lower water levels in the feeding lakes, have prompted the Panama Canal Authority to take action. Measures such as water-saving basins that recycle water during the locking process have been implemented, but these solutions, while somewhat effective, don't entirely resolve the larger issue at hand. Decoding the Panama Canal Depletion the drying up process of the Panama Canal presents a grave danger to worldwide trade since the canal stands as a vital connection between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, significantly cutting down travel durations for vessels. While it's tempting to assign blame, the truth is that the canal's water issues result from a mix of factors, changing weather patterns, amplified demand for its services, and, potentially, a lack of foresight in preparing for such challenges. Climate change stands out as a significant factor. Rising global temperatures have led to increasingly erratic weather patterns. Could it be that nature itself is working against this engineering marvel? 
Regions once abundant in rainfall now face extended dry spells, impacting the freshwater sources vital to the canal. Another compelling theory points to the sheer volume of maritime traffic. The Panama Canal, a vital artery for global trade, has witnessed a surge in vessel traffic. This heightened demand necessitates more water for lock operations, hastening the depletion of freshwater reserves. While the canal was designed to accommodate a specific number of ships, today's voracious appetite for trade has pushed it beyond its intended limits. Even with expansions and upgrades, certain parts of the Panama Canal's infrastructure have aged over a century. Some experts suspect that this aging infrastructure might not be as water efficient as newer systems could be. This inefficiency, coupled with rising demand, likely worsens the water depletion issue. But if the infrastructure is the culprit, why hasn't it been modernized? What's hindering the overhaul of this vital trade route? Here's the catch. The areas surrounding the Panama Canal have undergone significant changes in land use over the past few decades. Deforestation for farming and urban development has changed the natural water storage capacity of the land. Trees and forests play a crucial role in maintaining water levels and ensuring a consistent supply of fresh water to rivers and lakes. Without them, water availability diminishes, impacting the canal's operations. Moreover, recent studies reveal an increase in sedimentation rate within Gayton Lake, a major freshwater source for the canal. This sediment buildup reduces the lake's ability to hold water. On top of that, shifting weather patterns contribute to reduced inflow from rivers that feed into the canal's system. The Economic Impact of the Drying Panama Canal while various theories offer insights into the Panama Canal's water issue, experts widely agree that a multifaceted approach is crucial. It's not merely about refilling the canal, it's about preventing such crises from happening again. Have you ever wondered why the Panama Canal is often dubbed the crossroads of the world? For over a century, this engineering marvel has served as a vital shortcut between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Before its existence, Ships braved the perilous Cape Horn, adding thousands of miles and significant time to their voyages. Yet, with the canal's creation, global maritime routes were drastically shortened, revolutionizing international trade. But how does this affect you directly? Consider the last electronic gadget, piece of clothing, or certain foods you purchased. Chances are high that these items, or their components, traversed the Panama Canal. By offering a quicker route, the canal has not only reduced shipping durations, but also costs, advantages often passed on to consumers. Therefore, the economic implications of the canal for global trade are immense. It's estimated that the canal facilitates the movement of goods worth over $270 billion annually. This figure isn't just a statistic. It represents jobs, industries, and entire economies reliant on the canal's efficient functioning. The Panama Canal drying up is not just a problem for moving goods, it's a big economic disaster. Ships have to wait a long time or pay a lot of money to avoid the restrictions caused by low water levels, making travel harder. Other routes are more expensive and take more time, making the supply chain even more strained. The Canal Authority's limits, due to less water, mean that only half as many ships can pass through each day. People are paying up to $4 million in auctions just to be allowed through adding to the already high costs. Some ships are taking risky routes to avoid the problems. This situation is messing up the trade of oil, gas, and grain, and it's affecting U.S. exports a lot. Prices for consumers all over the world might go up because of the rising costs. If the flow of grain keeps going down, other countries like Brazil might take over in trade. Big shipping companies are adding extra fees to make up for their higher costs. As this problem keeps going, businesses need to come up with smart solutions to deal with the crisis. It looks like these challenges might stick around until 2024 and change how global trade works. But that's not all. Assessing the impact on the planet. The implications of the Panama Canal's depletion stretch far beyond economics. There are significant environmental concerns too. The reduced water flow could disrupt marine ecosystems, impacting the plant and animal life within them. Moreover, increased usage of longer alternative routes could lead to higher carbon emissions, worsening the global warming crisis. Could the canals drying inadvertently accelerate climate change? 
Scientists haven't reached a consensus on this yet, but it's a question sparking considerable debate. Right now, the focus is on potential recovery strategies. Immediate actions like water rationing and reducing daily crossings are essential, but long-term solutions are imperative. Exploring alternative water sources, implementing water-saving technologies, and even contemplating canal expansion or modernization to accommodate today's larger vessels and adapt to shifting climate conditions could be part of the answer. The Northwest Passage, a shortcut connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans via the Arctic, is opening due to melting ice caused by global warming. Despite offering a quicker route between Europe and Asia, challenges like unpredictable ice and the need for icebreakers persist. This raises questions about the Panama Canal's role in global trade. Concerns grow as the canal faces drying up, prompting efforts by the Panamanian government and the Panama Canal Authority for rejuvenation and modernization. The focus is on expanding to accommodate larger ships, adopting water-saving tech, and possibly building reservoirs for a steady water supply. The canal's future is uncertain, but dedicated efforts aim to preserve its legacy. Do you think the sudden drying up of the largest canal signifies a larger environmental issue? Let us know what you think in the comments.